Hello everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Disco Elysium. So, after we finally finished that case of the dead body on the boardwalk and after passing some time reading Dick Mullen books and um, dominating him in a game of sovereignty, I guess it's finally time to go back to our real business. And I guess at the moment our real business is, for lack of other options, the nightclub. I know, I can go back to the mural now and I might be able to pass that skill check now, but um, let's uh, take care of this first. So I need to investigate the church. I should be able to open it now because I have the key. So um, let's go back to, well, first of all, the marketplace so we can fast travel back to the church. At least I don't think there's anything else in this area that I want to do at the moment. So let's just uh, have a look at that church finally. I mean maybe at some point I will return to the bookstore and buy a few more books but at the moment I don't need to pass any time, so let's just travel to the church. Alright, and now let's see if we can open it. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock carelessly drilled into the wood. All right, um, I can open the padlock with a key now. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Let's go. Pull on the doors. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum. Hm. In the heart of the city. Ooh. So, this is how a DeLorean church looks like. Well, first of all, there's a lot of stuff to investigate. A strange stillness fills as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. Okay, well, if you say so. Let's start by looking at all these orbs. More of the forked lightning pattern you saw, saw outside. Bark beetles? No, it looks intentional. Some long forgotten style. Okay. Well, apparently there's um, a bird inside the church. Or could it be like a bat? No, it looks more like a bird. Interesting. This grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. This figure was added later. It's not part of the original church. Huh, okay. And there's clearly some other stuff here that's not part of the original church. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Something to do with radio frequencies. Huh, okay. A prayer book has been left open. Excerpts from the Perikinesian Litany of Love. Okay. What do we got here? Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tapes spinning on empty. A portable Harman Wo Woshi tape recorder. Is it possible it's recording something? <laughs> I mean, it's a tape recorder, so I guess it's possible. Someone's siphoning electrical current from outside into this antenna. Yeah, there's something over here, and what do we got here? In white, silver, and apricot fails, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall. 
<laughs> Oval faced and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. Alright, so I guess this, this is um, Dolores Day. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Alright. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Glowing lungs? Why? What is the significance of that? Kneel? No. Leave me alone, woman. I think I don't have to kneel. I mean, it's just an empty church and I'm not sure if um, Harry is really religious. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snowdrifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you. Look up? No, no, I'm not your bug. I mean, looking up is harmless enough. Let's do that. The woman looks down at you, standing there. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye. Of what? Compassion? Remorse? She acknowledges the passing of someone hmm. who is still alive. It's compassion, it's remorse, it's mourning, it's not possible to live? Um, I have no idea. I guess it's compassion, maybe? As that soft word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Tch. Is this some sort of religious uh, ritual? I guess I will do the same. Your fingertips touch your chest four times as you stand in the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles, her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. This is Dolores Day. How did I know this is the mother of humanism? Well, I have high encyclopedia, so that's probably how I know. Reconstruct the cracked glass. Turn away. <laughs> yeah, this is Dolores Day, clearly. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Pinewood Church in some records. So you knew of the place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. Alright, so this is a pretty ancient building, I guess. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds. Alright, anything else you can tell me about this place? There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they call them. The Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. So you're saying this is quite the rarity because it's the only one of these churches left. Alright, but apparently no one's using it anymore, not for its original purpose anyway. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find the instigator here. Something else, perhaps? He looks at the machinery lying around. Yeah, I mean, clearly someone has been using this place. And it's probably not the Ravers. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? Well, let's ask him. Yes, we all are. Her name, body and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. Hmm, stroke your chin first. I didn't think you were spiritual. I don't like her. She looks like a lever? What does that even mean? I don't know. Let's stroke um, our chin ominously. The woman looks by in silence, <laughs> smiling enigmatically. Honestly, I'm not sure if I have formed any opinion on Dolores Day or DeLoreanism at this point, because I don't really know that much about it. But yeah, I didn't know you were spiritual, Kim. It's not spiritual, it's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith, only accordance. Okay, so you are a DeLoreanism, DeLoreanist, because you have to? 
Well, I guess that is not very spiritual indeed. Anyway, let's uh, try my two skill checks here. I should have some good chances, especially with the Encyclopedia one. Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is Her Innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. All right. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain. <laughs> thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still. And will haunt you forever as it haunts all men. So this is basically this world's Jesus, right? Wait, what exactly is an innocence? I've heard of the system. Okay, when did she rule? What else do I know about her? I want more. Was there something terrifying about her? To hell with this. Sure, let's ask a few questions. I don't know a whole lot about this religion, so let's learn. Um, so what exactly is an innocence? This is like a pope. The highest category of historic individual. An embodiment of the world spirit. So some kind of ruler? More. An innocence is elected to office by the founding party. A precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate an authentic mm. rule should it coincide with our time. So there's only like six innocences in the uh, history so far, I gather. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed mm. event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. So it is kind of like a pope, except there might not be an innocence at any given time, because there's only six so far. So is one in office now? No. We are alone. <laughs> okay. So when did uh, Innocence Dolores Day rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muindi. She is, among other things, the innocence of inter-isolary travel <laughs> and the connected world. Okay, so basically she ruled at the time when this church was built. What else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene Le Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir La Clay. Also, that she was hmm. gorgeous beyond beauty. Okay, and was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess <laughs> sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. All right. She made the most of her position in the Antidelorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state. A scalpel, a piercing gaze. A scalpel? What a weird metaphor. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. All right, how come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new mm. world, the piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. Wow, I don't care. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go so far, so let's pick wow. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared, 
and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her. She was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. All right, so that's the reason why she's depicted with glowing lungs. Still, weird, why did her lungs start to glow? <laughs> Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. <laughs> That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. <laughs> the lungs are the symbol of love. Um, very fascinating. Well, tell me more. As did we all. The lands of the Mess and the Occident, and even far away Supramundi. Altogether, 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. All right, tell me more about her crowning. In a city called Advesperaskit in Vesper Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush <laughs> falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already her third years the secret servicemen of the innocents were worried about an assassination attempt. She must have been beautiful. I don't care how she looked. I don't care. It doesn't hurt me. <laughs> um, Harry seems oddly defensive about this sometimes. Um, yeah, I guess it must have been beautiful. Oh yes, she looked like humanity's young mother. A perfect mother. Insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Do I? How? Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attaché of officials stood by as her therriers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by <laughs> secret servicemen. And then what? One of the men in this secret service killed her hmm? 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. Okay, but what could she be if not human? Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Well, that seems very vague. So I'm not sure if maybe this uh, guy was just uh, slightly insane. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fouling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, hmm. like a furnace and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting <laughs> to breathe for over ten minutes. Okay. Well, I mean, that uh, seems uh, kind of unhuman, but can we really trust this person? That's the question. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs <laughs> and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria, and religious psychology. Well, makes sense to me, especially since we wouldn't really know what she could have been if not human. I mean, was she an alien? Was she some kind of goddess? I mean, Abani, she died or, you know, what else is there if not human? Anyway, um, we learned a lot about her, but uh, was there something terrifying about her maybe? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it, but... But? Although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her therriers. She was the most socially secluded and least mm. self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the mess state. <laughs> and then there were the resettlement programs. 
Okay, well, um, this uh, escalated quickly, so we went from the mother of humanism to a war criminal and resettlement programs. Okay, tell me more about that. The Misk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating inter-secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she <laughs> called the Army of Humanity. Well, sounds like she might have been a tyrant after all. Suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. I see. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, <laughs> the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the percentage, Mare Interregnum. Okay, that seems to be somewhat irrelevant compared to the fact that she may have been a war criminal, but okay. <laughs> Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel hmm. when they think of her. All right. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Well, I mean... The icon here on the wall is at least partially destroyed, so we can't really see all of it. But I mean, it does look like there might be more going on down here in, you know, the destroyed part. Lieutenant Yefrater, you've stood there for over five minutes. <laughs> the lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. Yeah, I've been listening, listening to Encyclopedia telling me more about... Dolorianism. I had to, you know, refresh my memory. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? She's somehow connected to the case. Uh, well, probably not. At least I can't see any connection at the moment. Glowing lungs, that's fucked up. Nothing, just looking around. She's beautiful. She is not human. Yale war criminal. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure if I really want to pick any of these glowing lungs. Well, it's kind of weird anyway. Yes, glowing lungs are quite unusual. After that one time, they have not been reported to glow. He takes his glasses off to clean them. You know, this church, the coast, we shouldn't linger. Finish what you came here to do and let's move on. This isn't a good place to get lost in. Right. Okay, we have another skill check here. Reconstruct the cracked glass. Um, I mean, it's a white check, and I think I should be able to just uh, return to this dialogue. So maybe I will increase my chances a little bit here. First of all, I did get like a new skill point, but I mean, I used up my emergency point recently, so I'm going to save this one. Um, but I'm pretty sure I can increase my visual calculus a little bit. Let's have a look specifically at some of my glasses. Well, I already have a glass that increases my visual calculus, so I may actually not be able to increase it any further. I think it's mostly like drama and... Um, oh, here we go. Here we go drama and conceptualization that I can increase uh, quite a bit. And I do have quite a bit for logic as well, but yeah, my logic <laughs> my logic bonuses are quite amazing. Um, okay, well, it's one more point. Oh, what is this? Hey, her innocence Dolores Day liked little figurines, right? Like holding little men between her fingers, remember? Yeah, I've I've just heard about this. No, I don't remember anything. I don't want to think about this. Goodbye. <laughs> I I want to know where this thought is going. So uh, let's pick this option. You have the headless Falun Rider figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. <laughs> what? Look around. Win who back? I can't win her back. She's a long dead historical figure. 
that's a good point. I should, yes, this is a task of mine now. Forget about this discard thought. <laughs> yeah, what would I win by giving her this figurine? What would that accomplish? Don't be so pessimistic. Love doesn't die that easily. <laughs> I should, yes, I, this is a task of mine now. I don't really see the point of this, but again, for now I'm just going to accept every task and we will decide if we want to do anything about it. So sure, I guess this is a task of mine now. So very, very, very nifty. Nifty and mysterious. Hm. This is surely what the figurines are for. And I don't have any other use for these figurines, so I may as well give it to Dolores Day, I suppose. Um, okay, let's interact with the painting the again. of humanism stands above you. A precious and complex wax painting on a single pane of glass. A crack runs across the length of her body, her face oval and sad. Looks like I can't give this figurine to her. <laughs> Why? Is this not the right figurine or what's the problem? Problem. Why? Because she's a stained glass window. <laughs> yes. You could have noticed that earlier. That does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? Like what? Is the task still on? Okay. Yeah, what could I have meant by that? I don't know. What are we thinking of? Part of your mind has gone <laughs> on to other things already. Yeah, this is a confusing task you gave me. So, whatever. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. Nothing has changed in her expression. Okay, now let's uh, try the skill check again. Reconstruct the cracked glass. A jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. Mm -hmm. And a text. A light motif below them both. What shattered this mosaic? Who is the older woman? The motto? What does it say? Yes, let's ask all of it. So what shattered this mosaic? Unknown. <laughs> okay, apparently visual calculus is not good enough to figure that out. A motor carriage? A gunshot? Someone falling into it? Or maybe just hooligans looking for something <laughs> to break? I feel the last option is the most likely one. But yeah, um, who is that older woman? The escutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rights apfel <laughs> in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised above. She herself is whole. All right, makes sense. Small figures of wise men, common men. Worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thaliers, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. And what about the motto? What does it say? Below both women, in luminous black letters. Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. Okay. After life, death. After death, a new life. Is this what it means? <laughs> Using my uh, school French to translate this? And then along the left side, après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. Okay. Um, after the world, the... I have no idea what that is. And after the gri, um, the new world. Is this maybe like the pale? After the world, the pale. And after the pale, the new world. Would make sense anyway. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. All right, there we go. This is the great light motif of humanism, a summary of the effect of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. 
So my translation was um, mostly correct. Lieutenant is used to say after life, death, and so on. Death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. All right, he seems to be familiar with that um, motto. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated hmm. as the RCM slogan. Okay. No more, however. Why no more? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We already suspected hmm. of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. <laughs> it was a macho thing. It was too feminine, but at the same time, I guess, too much connected to the religion. And that's why they dropped it. Okay, so what is the RCM motto now? Um, is it a bit more macho? Justice, union, prudence and force. Okay, well, I guess that is um, not quite as feminine. <laughs> cool, not very feminine. I like the other one better. I like this. Puts the fear of God back in the F words. Um, well, justice, union, prudence and force. It's also very generic, to be honest. <laughs> Um, so maybe I do like the other one better. So do I. All right. Anyway, I guess we have uh, sufficiently uh, investigated this mosaic. So let's step back now. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. Nothing has changed in her expression. All right. Let's turn away. So, um, I'm pretty sure there's more stuff for me to look at here. For example, what do we got here? A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Oh, is this another radio computer? Another radio computer. Mm. And this time it's already turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he <laughs> thinks, alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. Sure. Careful is my middle name. We should probably let it be. It's becoming clear that there's no trace of the suspect anywhere inside the church. Yes, but this machine looks just like the one in the doomed commercial area. Wait, let me just investigate it. Step behind the computer. You're right. Let's get out of here. No, I think I would like to investigate this. <laughs> um, for once, it looks uh, like the one in the Doom commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. He inspects the machine's framework, careful not to touch anything. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect, a model number RC7024. Equipped with a Fell mainframe <laughs> and a Ream-compatible interim printer. Alright, not sure if that is useful to me. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. Whatever a noise attenuation circuit is. But yeah, um, I guess I will investigate this anyway. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. All right, let's look inside the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, log, February to March. All right, I still have that one filament that I found in the Doom commercial area, but I couldn't do anything with it because I don't have the password. So I'm not sure if I will be able to do anything with this one. Another filament memory. Press play to talk with the repeater. Well, I guess I'll give it a try. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. <laughs> Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Oh, is this the same one as before? 
Good afternoon. Votre race accident en scène brune. Yeah, This I think it is. is the East Insel Indian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? It's the same old woman who <laughs> spoke with yep. through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Yvonne, it's me again. How are you? I looked inside the car, but the tape on the filament just said lock February to March. Thought was accident, like the one in the Doom commercial area. Thanks, but I'm finished with this call. Um, yeah, hello, Yvonne, it's me again. <laughs> Good, thank you. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? I'm not sure. The filament just said log February to March. Good. Please repeat the password. Uh, of course, I still don't have the password. Neither for this one, nor the one that I found before. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. A password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? Is it my birthday? Is it the police? Please open this thing. <laughs> yeah, I think we tried this before with the other filament, and she wasn't willing to give us um, any leeway here. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I still don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. All right. Votre saxison, is there anything else I can do for you today? So, yeah, this is also Fortress accident, just like the one in the commercial area. I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on Sambrun, the other on Rue de saint -Gedlaine. All right, that's got to be uh, the Doom commercial area. Saint-Brun, that's the church. Mm -hmm. And Rue de saint guilaine that's the doomed commercial area. All right. Anything else I can help you with? Well, I guess I need to find out what that damn password is. But until then, no, I think I'm done. Goodbye, votre accident. <laughs> She says as her voice disappears into a whirl of static. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated. Revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Right, and I guess I can't use the print option because I would have to enter the password first, right? This is how this works. Nothing happens. Yep, I need the password for this. Okay, well, um, nothing I can do here at the moment. So let's just continue to look around. See some stuff over here and whatever that is. The bowl is filled with water. A live wire runs directly into it. What the hell is that is supposed to be? Could these wires work as contact microphones? Yeah, but why are they in plates of water? This is weird. The silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing hmm. seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. Do you now? And then it's gone. Almost all of it. But for the faintest of hums. Okay. It seems the sound here is detached from its source somehow, if not blotted out outright. Truly unusual. Sounds like the pale. How do I know what the pale sounds like? No, let me just listen. Yeah, how would I even know how the pale sounds like? From recordings of the far pale. You've heard them. <laughs> We all have. Okay, well, um, I can't remember them, but uh, if you say so... You can hardly hear your own breathing. Yell as loud as you can. Stomp your feet and clap your hands. I'm really going to scare Kim with that. Also, this one bird that's just flying around here is kind of irritating me. But yeah, let's stomp our feet, I suppose. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels hmm. even more total somehow. All right, so what happens if I yell? Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest hmm. of whimpers. So basically this place is just swallowing all noise? What's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. 
Can you hear anything? Almost nothing, and it's beginning to worry me. Not really, but it's extraordinary. I've never experienced anything like this. Can't hear shit. Um, yeah, apparently this place is just completely swallowing all noise. I wonder why the church was built with such strange acoustics. This would also be a problem if the ravers attempt to start a nightclub in here if they can't play music because the place is just eating up uh, the music. Although apparently it's only in this particular place of the church because he didn't have any complaints over there and was talking just normally. So apparently it's just a very specific spot. Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity. Mm -hmm singing and dancing on its premises maybe they wanted to discourage singing and dancing well like i said this would be a problem if you want to turn this into a nightclub hey what if it's something paranatural not supernatural it's probably nothing just our imagination i don't think so whatever it is it's definitely real something odd is happening around us yep clearly the lieutenant doesn't reply but you can sense him tense up next to you. Well, let's look up into the bell tower. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. Okay, I have another skill check here. Perception, it's a red check, but it is very high. What if I don't want to know what's up there? <laughs> well, I do want to know what's up there, so... Let's give this a try. Okay. What will we find? <laughs> it's like there's something moving up there. Ooh. A shadow has emerged from the tower and it's making its way toward you through all the other shadows. On the ceiling, you say? Yes. The darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. Well, let's follow the shadow's movements. It's not a shadow anymore, becoming more substantial as it gets closer. The shape of an animal <laughs> descends. Well, maybe it's the crap man that um, the ravers have been talking about. Officer, is there something up there? The lieutenant follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is that you are seeing. Oh no, you've lost sight of it. Hmm. Where did it go? I don't know, let's blink. <laughs> okay, well, there's definitely you see something. something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Looks pretty human though. It doesn't look like a crab, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe it's possible to talk to it. Well, I guess I need to uh, try. I mean, it seems to have a name, Tiago, so um, I guess I will try to talk to it. But maybe before I do that, I saw a few other things to investigate here, so let me do this first. Apparently this creature or person isn't going to go anywhere. Um, oh, a mask, a banger, silk scarf for more pain threshold. Oh, by the way, I still haven't changed back to my normal outfit. Let me do this. Um, yeah, the rest is still as it should be. A figure drawn in frost on the window depicting a deer. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass obscuring the view. <laughs> I'll be with you in a second, Mr. Crabman. A cracked pane of glass, colorful. It came from the stained glass window, still has letters on it too. Oh, okay, so someone has taken some of the shards of that window and brought it over here. Okay. Um, any way to reach whatever that is? A spider has spun its web around this wood carved pillar. And we have something over here. Again, I will just let Harry Path find his way there. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see where I have to go in this darkness. Uh, 
Ooh, um, some bangers red brokes for more empathy. I take it. And some money. All right, um, it looks like we have looked at all the orbs and items we can investigate here. So I guess um, we should go and talk to our mysterious quote-unquote crap person. However, the episode is long enough, so we will do this in the next episode. For now, let's call it a day. As always, thank you for watching and see you again next time.